Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, just taking a little break. Uh, very excited that I got the. <laughs> so um, uh, I don't know if <laughs> I'm having a senior <laughs> moment or something, but I um, uh, I've been waiting for uh, ten days for something that I never ordered. Uh, I thought I had some Gemini mailers on the way to mail out the uh, the posters, the pinup posters for one of the perk tiers on Jawbreakers Lost Souls Remastered, and I kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally uh, I, I checked like all my different accounts and my PayPal, and there was no payment, and I go, oh, and then I got another package that I have no memory of ordering, and that was for bubble mailers, which I'm sure I had a... I'm sure I had a reason at the time to switch up for the Gemini mailers and the bubble mailers. The bubble mailers are actually more expensive. Uh, so it wasn't a price thing. Um, but uh, so I packaged up all the pinups. <laughs> I put them, you know, in a, 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 well, a bags and boards. And then for international, I put some uh, cardboard in the front and the back. So uh, it should be good. Very excited to get that out. So that'll be the second tier fulfilled today. I'm going to go... Uh, mail that off and I'm also going to mail off that how to draw comics the Marvel way Now I did a video about it a couple days ago and it had a give you giveaway and everyone was very excited But then people also pointed out they go uh, they're selling this for $3.99 at five below now I'm a dum-dum and uh, I thought five below is a place that sold coolers. I'm not kidding I'm not trying to be funny. I actually I thought it sold coolers um, But apparently it sells things for five dollars and below um, so if you've got a five below um, <coughs> in your town, uh, go get it. Go get it. Um, and I might, I might even go just buy a bunch of them and do some more giveaways because that was a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, so this is Unstoppable Wasp uh, number 10. You can tell that from... Well, where can you tell? Number... Oh, okay. Unsp Unstoppable Wasp number 7. Okay, that explains why I couldn't find the cover when I was Googling Unstoppable Wasp number 8. So, this has been canceled. Uh, uh, just as 7 came out, they announced it was canceled for the second time in the year. It was canceled at 8 last time. It was canceled at 10 this time, but they announced it before 7. So, really it was canceled at 8, but they're just given two more. So, that, oh, we have progress. You know, we, we increased the length of our uh, SJW series by uh, uh, 25%. So, anyway, this one was really really weird i was reading this in between um uh packaging up the pinups and i'm watching uh dumb and dumber okay so here's here's a here's a little thing they don't tell you about uh, middle age um it means you're gonna die <laughs> it means the things that you remember clearly in the past that is the future of your death i saw dumb and dumber when i was 20 and now it's 25 years later and uh, in 25 years, I'm just, <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty scary. Because I remember that really clearly. Um, I remember what theater I saw it at. Uh, so anyway, so one of the things watching Dumb and Dumber, I kept saying, I go, can't do that joke. Can't do that joke. Can't do this scene. The title's got to go. In fact, the whole concept's got to go. Um, but uh this one is, one of the things about that is, you know, you're like, uh, that's not really offensive, but someone could take it so. And then sometimes you go, eh, did we really need gay panic scenes in every single movie? No, we probably didn't. Um, the weird thing about gay panic scenes is gay panic scenes were not making fun of gay people. They were making fun of the insecure straight people. Like, that's the whole point of the joke. One of the big things about SJWs is they, they do this thing I call synthetic autism. They're not autistic, but they pretend they are, so they pretend they don't understand how basic jokes work. Gay panic isn't making fun of gay people. It's making fun of the panicking people, the straight people, or the people who think they're straight. Um, but uh, anyway, so, you know, obviously things were different then, but it felt like things were more free. You could just tell a joke, and if someone didn't like the joke, they'd be like, hey, fuck you, bro. Excuse me, sorry. Earmuffs. Um, but that's what would happen, and basically it was it would be done. There wouldn't be like, I, I was just imagining, um, like all the Mary Sue, if, if Dumb and Dumber came out this year, Dumb and Dumber is coming out and we need to talk about it. Um, uh, but anyway, so this is a weird book that just made me 
deeply sad because one of the things I've been saying about this Jeremy Whitley is yes, he's an SJW. He's a huge SJW. But I think he's legitimately talented. And I think he legitimately wants to write stories for girls. That's kind of been his thing. You know, I write the paramilitary, the military, iron sights, everything I have has guns in it. Um, except for one story. Because it's, it's kind of like realistic space, so it doesn't have a gun in it. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you have things that you go back to. Jeremy Whitley really likes doing, like, takes on girls, fiction girls thing. But the thing that he takes is he takes away the thing that girls like it. So I get the idea he's a very sincere, confused guy. He's like, I don't understand. I, I, I do these fairy tales for girls. And I take out all the romance and the magic and I give you like uh, uh, my weird hot political takes and bipolar disorder and th this doesn't sell well. Um, so it's just it's just like, Jeremy, you, you need to unclench. Tell a joke. Tell a joke that offends someone. I, I, I don't know. Like, relax. Stop. Like, there's so much weight on every single panel. It's like... It's like every, he's like, you know, you're trying to tell a story. It's like, I want to, I want the reader to know that I think women are good and smart. I want women, I want the reader to know that I think racism is bad. I want the reader to like, oh God. So uh, we're going to hit all, almost all the tropes except for forced cursing. So we're going to get all women are friends. All women like each other. Um, uh, we're going to get uh, no heterosexual romance at all. Um, and, uh, but it's mainly just, uh, emotional invalidation and all women like each other. So what they do, <laughs> I got to read this. This is hilarious. After a difficult manic episode, Nadia was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. This is a book for basically eight year old girls. Uh, with the support of her friends, she began seeing a therapist who pointed out because her childhood was stolen by the red room where she was raised as a child soldier. Uh, Nadia never had a chance to celebrate the small things in life. So it's time for Nadia's first birthday party. That could be good, except for it's still really sad. It's still a bipolar young woman who was tortured and basically in a jail, raised in a jail. She's basically Bane. Um, but then we do manga eyes and manga smiles and all the women are friends and silly cartoon eyes. And you're just like... And then, but you always have to do these, these little digs. Janet Van Dyne. By the way, Nadia Van Dyne is in no relationship and is not the stepdaughter of not Janet Van Dyne. It's just, do you remember when Hank Pym hit uh, uh, Janet Van Dyne in that story from like 1979 where the writer did not write it to be domestic abuse? He was supposed to be pushing her away. And then the, uh, the artist just had her do it like a pimp slap. And... Uh, uh, oh, we got a proved body type. Janet Van Dyne is a, I don't know, 38, 39, 40-year-old woman. Basically drawn exactly the same as Nadia Van Dyne, who is not her blood relation, but she chose to have her uh, last name because her father, who has the same mental disorder, bipolar disorder, uh, hit her once in a story with extremely extenuating circumstances. I believe people who read it said he had been up for like three days straight and he was basically going insane. Um, how many times has Wolverine just attacked people? Like, you, you don't, they don't put that weight on him. So anyway, so it's Janet Van Dyne, a.k.a. the Winsome Wasp, best Avenger, even better stepmom. She's not your stepmom. Um, Nadia Van Dyne, the unstoppable wasp, genius, scientist, party girl. And then here's a man. Let's see how he's described. Scott Lang, Ant-Man. Just Ant-Man? So so Avenger. What? Great dad. Well, one out of three isn't bad. Uh, so then she uh, meets his daughter, who she's never met before, and they are instantly best friends, and she loves her. Yep. And uh, then uh, we go to. Uh, they start doing this thing again. Like, how do I say this? They're making personality disorders a charming affectation. Uh, most of the women in here don't talk like women who have 
adult brains or full range of emotional reactions. Everyone kind of talks like a robot. Um, and then, hey, hey, she's being emotionally validated by everyone. And again, these people have not met her. I believe she's met three or four out of this 20 to 30 people. But they're having a party because she's a girl. She's amazing. They're women. They all like each other. Here's Ms. Marvel. They've never met. They are instantly friends. And then, again, this is like the Mark Wade thing. If you have a Hispanic character, you got to talk about illegal immigration. If you have a black character, you got to talk about uh, uh, racism. So you have one character who's Pakistani, one character who's Indian. So they, they literally just meet, met each other. Nadia, you'll never believe this. Ms. Marvel's great-grandparents were from the same city in India as my grandparents, which my family had to leave during partition. Also, it's Mumbai, so it's like 21 million people. That's how I make friends. I, uh, I just quote Wikipedia factoids. Um, but still, there's a superhero who's from the same kind of family as me. Excuse me, I have a question. What kind of family are you from? You're both from different countries. Well, you're both American, but your parents are from different countries. Um, your great-grandparents were from the same country until her great-grandparents were forcibly removed to Pakistan. That's what partition was. And what... How is how does anyone build a friendship based on that? Especially you just met. Also, what is we're from the same kind of family mean? What is is that a dog whistle? Um, so then she meets some other people and she's she has a completely fake put upon emotion. Uh, this is a this is a uh, type of happy I call Oprah happy. It's when you uh, you have a. a, a Overblown fake happiness to hide deep abiding sadness. Oh my gosh, everyone I met, uh, she just met Hercules and uh, nobody has any boundaries. Nobody has any physical boundaries. Nobody has emotionally boundaries. You meet someone and they are the same gender of, as you of, or your great grandparents lived in the same city and you're instantly best friends. Uh, I think I talked about this in the earlier one because one of the things that kept I don't know, bothering me, is that this is made for Diana. This is made for uh, girls of Diana's age. And I wouldn't want to show this to her because it's a very confused take on everything. Nadia was ra raised in a prison. Her social skills are trash. Um, and she has bipolar disorder and she probably has severe PTSD. Then we put a story where every single person likes her and they're all friends and half of them are weirdly related to her by robot blood. It's comic books. Just go with it. Um, and uh, it's then we get this weird thing where it's like, oh, this is the son of someone I've never met who's related to me in the most tortured way ever. By the way, he's a Skrull. And then this adult woman threatens a child. Uh, and then... I always wanted a little brother, and it turns out I have one. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. People don't talk like this. This is fake emotions, fake talking. I, I, I don't know what... Oh, and then she threatens to uh, murder Tony Stark. There is one, interest, one instance of heterosexuality in this book. Literally just one. And it's the company with a threat. So she says to Tony, You're dating my not-really-stepmom. Um, and if you hurt her, uh, I'll, I'll basically make you pay. So we get the funny thing where he says, I think she threatened to murder me if I hurt you. Um, and uh, then uh, like it's nothing but like a uh, fire truck level of pounds per square inch, water hose, emotions, and emotional invalidation. And if you're a woman, you're allowed to randomly attack people or threaten them and it's funny if you're not you, you just gotta obsequiously just kind of like rub your neck and look nervous all the time gotta skip a couple pages uh oh we'll talk about this one so um then uh she she tries to murder someone even though they're all from the same experiences so she should have some empathy 
but it's funny because I don't know girl emotions. Um, things went well with Shay's mom. Shay is her girlfriend. She they she started dating the first lesbian she met and instantly was introduced to her mom like a week later. Um, no, that was so terrible. But Shay kissed me. Then they start leaping for joy ten feet in the air. She kissed you. That's amazing. I know. I'm so happy that I was whispering and now I'm yelling. And then she says, Priya is also very excited. I am weirdly invested in this relationship. I just want you all to be happy and have little assassin engineer babies. It's pretty early in the relationship for that. Well, I mean, there's no actual time where no matter what age you are that you two could have babies together. But like I say in the title... I'm fine if you want to tell me this isn't propaganda, but if it isn't propaganda, what is it? Now, I know Jeremy, with the best of intentions, says, I like gay people. I want people to know I like gay people. And if you're gay, I want people to know that I like you. And that's fine. But this is called Unstoppable Wasp. Well, she's, <laughs> this is the one where it's, her name is not on the cover. But she's the main character. You've had two series and there's been no romance, there's been no crushes, there's been no anything. These two characters who are supporting characters only, their romance, which is built on them both being lesbians and within 10 feet of each other, has taken over pretty much all of the second. Uh, it started in the first one and it's been basically the main emotional thread of this entire second one. So what is it? What you know, it's it's too much of a coincidence that you're into uh, what, eight plus seven, the fifteenth issue of this you know series. It's basically had a hiatus. There's been no heterosexuality from any of the girls in the group. That's called girl. Um, there's been no you know positive, happy. You, you got Scott Lang divorced dad. You got to, uh, uh, Tony Stark being threatened with murder, um, then what else you have? They have to bring up the Scott Lang thing and that he hit her and then she changed, he, he hit her not stepmom, so she changed the name to her stepmom. Like, okay, agenda. Is, is, is propaganda different than agenda? Like, throw it off. Get this off of you. Jeremy Whitley, you seem like a guy who genuinely likes these characters. You've created some new characters you like. You gotta give them conflict. You know, they do this manga eyes and they do these manga expressions and these manga reactions, but find me, find me a manga or anime that has female characters constantly being emotionally validated, constantly emotionally validating each other and themselves while having effectively no uh, conflicts in any of the stories and no heterosexual crushes or romances or relationships at all. Find me that. Find it for me. Now, you might say, oh, well, there's, you know, there's this whatever uh, anime, and it's about lesbians, and all the characters are lesbians. I guarantee you there are character uh, uh, conflicts, there are personality conflicts, there are animosities, there's all kinds of drama. This is not anything. These two girls are lesbians. They got it with intent feet of each other. They were immediately dating. It was immediately a serious relationship. They were uh, introduced to parents just weeks after meeting, and now they're talking about having babies together. Um, what is this? I'm fine if you say it isn't propaganda, but I need to know what is this, because this isn't a naturally told story. So then we meet the... We go out to a nightclub um, with America Chavez... Uh, and uh, then there's a superhero fight that's just a, simply a montage, and then her mother who is dead is alive. By the way, what in the name of M.C. Escher is going on right here? This turned my brain into a halibut right there. So then she gets a, 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 I don't know, Skype call, and then she goes, I know that voice. My darling, I can't believe that I was finally able to reach you. Mom, how are you? I thought you were dead. Okay, this is terrible dialogue. This is terrible writing. It, first of all, mom, I thought you were dead. How are you? Not mom, how are you? I thought you were dead. There's, there's a crucial emotional factor that needs to be acknowledged. My mom, who I thought was dead, is alive. 
Hey, by the way, how you doing? Um, where are you? I'll come get you. I don't know where I am, Nadia. I'm just so happy to hear your voice. Tell me, sweetheart, how are you? Mom, I have so much I want to tell you. There, There's nothing emotionally true about any of this. It's just all manga and silly billy and all women like each other. And then this stuff. They've been doing this for 15 This is for the age of like 8 to 10 year olds. 8 to 10 year olds do not want to read two paragraph answers to a one sentence question. So, oh, yay, they're at a science expo again and they all like each other. Best friendsies for well be so Nothing matters. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the uh, GoFundMe uh, for the lawsuit. I'm working. Uh, the lawsuit is based around freedom in the comic book industry. Freedom to create what you want, sell what you want, buy what you want. Because that's been denied to both me. Wait, wait. I'm pointing at me. Okay, this is me pointing towards my hand that's holding up the cell phone. And this is pointing to you, the viewer. So I've had my freedom curtailed, but so have you. So the link to the GoFundMe is in the description. And you Indiegogo backers are mailing out your uh, pinups today. Thanks for watching.